Welcome traders to another Tickmill Weekly Market Outlook for week commencing the 19th of September. And I guess really all eyes will be on the Federal Reserve in the US next week on Wednesday. Uh, the market uh, is favouring a 75 basis point raise. However, there is a chance the Fed could go further. Um, the market was favouring that 75 basis point hike ahead of the August CPI report, but the much higher than expected inflation print has seen the market price about a 20% chance that the Fed will go over and above by opting for 100 basis points. A 75 basis point hike is, as I say, the favoured call, but the market seems to be acknowledging the risk with inflation proving to be stickier than had been expected. The subsequent meetings in November and December could see more aggressive action from the Fed than is currently being priced in. While the geopolitical backdrop, the China slowdown story, the potential for energy rationing in Europe, the strong dollar and fragile looking domestic equity and housing markets all argue for a more moderate path of tightening in the coming months. If inflation momentum doesn't slow, the bank will hike by a further but, uh, 75 basis points in November and possibly 50 in December. The message from the Fed next week is likely to emphasize data dependency, but its updated economic forecasts are likely to show the end of 22 uh, Fed funds rate at 4.125% rather than the 3.4% forecast in July. And uh, markets expect that it will uh, be kept as that for 2023 before dropping back to the longer term average of 2.5%. Uh, in terms of other data in the US, on Monday we get the September NHAB housing market index, looking for a 48 print there. Elevated costs, lack of labour and affordability all starting to bite. On Tuesday, August housing starts, looking for a 1% print there. And uh, demand being hit hard by financial conditions. In terms of building permits, also released on Tuesday, looking for a negative 3.8% print there, uh, while input constraints continue to limit supply. And then obviously on Wednesday, as I said, we have the FMC meeting. We also get all this existing home sales. Uh, looking for a negative 2.3% there. Uh, persistent weakness likely as tightening continues. Then on Thursday, obviously, we have initial jobless claims, uh, 213k last week, and likely to remain at those low levels for the time being. We also get the August leading index, looking for a flat print there, 0% growth outlook clearly deteriorating. And we get September Kansas City Fed Index regional surveys mixed with a pretty fragile outlook, really. And then we round out the week on Friday with manufacturing PMI, 51.3% expected. We also get services PMI, 45.0. And we will hear again from Fed Chair Powell, who's giving some opening remarks at a Fed Listens event. Uh, those S&P PMIs point to much weaker conditions than the ISMs, potentially implying larger effects on small to mid-sized firms. So from a technical perspective, uh, the dollar traded, as we discussed last week, into that 110.30 uh, uh, target zone. We saw first leg of uh, what could be a potential three-way corrective move. So what I'm initially going to be watching this week is any follow-through to the downside, checking uh, this one 0819 ascending trend line support. Uh, if we don't find buyers there, then we could get an equality move. So when I'm talking about the equality move, I mean equal legs. So we could see an ABC move that uh, can see us trading down into this high volume area, 10650s. And then from there, we look for uh, one more push here to complete what could potentially be a more uh, meaningful wave three high uh, into that 11150s, 11180s and um, 112.50 is just above, which is the monthly projected range resistance. But again, um, if we get some momentum bearish divergence to develop on that next push, I'm certainly going to be looking at uh, re-engaging on the short side. I'm currently short the dollar index and looking for that uh, trend line test and potential equality objective as we head into this week. On the upside, like I say, all attention uh, for me is going to be on that 111.50s, 112.50s for a more meaningful tradable uh, way three high in place. Heading to uh, the Eurozone, in terms of data next week, uh, what do we have really? It's, uh, it's pretty light week in terms of data. Focus is really going to be on Thursday when we get September consumer confidence, looking for a negative 24.6% print there. Um, confidence has collapsed to historical lows in the Eurozone. And then we finish things up on Friday, 
services and manufacturing PMI, manufacturing looking 49.1, uh, services 49.2. A broad-based weakening in demand is becoming an increasingly prominent risk for the Eurozone. So from a technical perspective, obviously, pretty much looking at the inverse to the dollar index scenario. So if we can hold a base here at the 9940s, we look for an equality test back into the 10270s. From there, I'm looking for another leg to the downside to ultimately check that 9740s, 9760s, which is the uh, yearly S3. And from there, I'm going to be looking for a more meaningful bounce, uh, certainly a counter trend rally that can be traded from uh, the long side before eventually taking another look uh, to the downside uh, as we head into the back end of the year. But for now, uh, looking for a mover to test the 102.50-103 area. Moving to the UK, obviously, sadly, on Monday, uh, the UK is going to be offline, bank holiday uh, for the state funeral of Her Majesty the Queen. In terms of data, uh, right move house prices uh, released on Monday, more declines to come as policy tightening continues. Heading into Thursday, uh, the big event of the week is going to be uh, the Bank of England. Um, markets narrowly favouring a 50 basis point hike on Thursday, taking the bank rate to 2.25%. Although 75 basis points is clearly on the table, and markets expect at least a couple of policymakers uh, policy to vote for it. The announcement of an energy price cap from the government would drastically lower near-term CPI, reducing concerns about consumer inflation expectations, becoming de-anchored and reducing the urgency to act even more aggressively. However, the Hawks will be worried about the recent independent sterling weakness and will also argue that the government's support package could increase medium-term inflation given it reduces the risk of recession. That means it's a close meeting to call, but if markets are correct, then the committee does move more cautiously than the Fed and the ECB next week, then uh, we can expect another 50 basis points move in November, at least another 25 bips uh, in the December meeting. And in terms of uh, the data then, we round it out on uh, Friday. Manufacturing PMI 47.3, services looking 15.9. UK is in a similar position to the Eurozone as well. Manufacturing and services have been hit hard by inflation. We'll also get GF GFK consumer sentiment read. Uh, growing pessimism amongst the uh, consumers in the UK should see that come in uh, with a negative 44 or below the negative 44 last time print uh, for that reading. From a technical perspective, sterling uh, weakness as noted. Looking now for a move, uh, any corrections basically to find resistance into this uh, high volume area here, uh, coming in around 115.50s, 115.20. Various reverse buttons there take, should take us down to test this 112.50. Now from there, I'm expecting a uh, potential for a more tradable uh, corrective load to be put in place. Uh, we should see some nice momentum divergence in play. And so we'll be looking to trade that to the long side, uh, thinking about a move back up into test the uh, 120 of monthly projected range resistance before we uh, can think about the next meaningful leg to the downside. Ultimately now, I'm looking for a move down into the 106, which is the 127 extension of this uh, last rally that we saw uh, during, uh, post the, uh, the pandemic uh, crash there. So heading to Japan, and uh, obviously the BOJ, the Ministry of Finance on the wires last week, uh, referencing or, or taking reference rates from, uh, from some of the, the banks in Japan, as obviously very concerned about the moves um, that have been seen in the yen. In terms of data, Tuesday we get the August CPI uh, year over year print looking for 2.9%, 2.6% last time out. Prices pressure gradually building. Uh, the BOJ appear unconcerned at this stage. And then the, uh, on Thursday we get the Bank of Japan meeting. The BOJ is holding its uh, monetary policy or meeting on 21st and 22nd of September. Markets expect another status quo rate decision, though markets don't totally rule out a possibility that the BOJ will adjust forward guidance in a less dovish direction. Regarding a potential adjustment to the forward guidance, the most likely case would be a removing uh, the language on a possible rate cut. While the effectiveness of this expectation control would not be so powerful, it would allow the authorities to buy some time, and markets think it's too early for the BOJ to hint at a rate hike, as Governor Corona very clearly denied any near-term rate hikes by the uh, bank at his press conference in July. From a technical perspective, 
uh, potential double top here on the daily time frame. So I look to be short. So I've only moved now through that 142.60, looking for a three-way corrective move down into our ascending trend line support and the high volume node 134.80. So at this stage, any push higher back into uh, take out the prior cycle highs here, uh, test into this ascending trend line resistance in this broadening top pattern. One, any move above 146, I'd certainly be looking to fade as long as we maintain momentum divergence. Running out the data for next week, we are looking down under in Australia. Let's see what we've got on deck there. Monday, the RBA head of domestic markets, Kearns is speaking at an AFR property summit. And then heading into Tuesday, we get the RBA minutes. It's, uh, is it time for the pace of rate hikes to moderate from here, as has been suggested by Governor Lowe? Then on Wednesday, we get uh, the RBA deputy governor speaking, Bullock speaking to Bloomberg uh, on Wednesday. We also get Westpac uh, leading index six month growth rate looks to uh, set to weaken there. Thursday, it's a public holiday in, in Australia, sorry, and that rounds out the data of note next week. So from a technical perspective, uh, Aussie sold off from that um, high volume note that we were anticipating. Now I'm looking for this, we're still this elusive 6640 test. We came uh, within 30 pips of it last week. I'm looking for that to, to set up, maintain some momentum divergence. We watch for bullish reversal patterns to re-engage on the long side. Looking for this test up into the 69 and the descending trend line resistance. And just to round things out, let's check in, uh, take a weekend look at Bitcoin. Obviously, Weakened last week with that CPI print, and we're sitting now on the high volume node here, just above 19,900. Uh, quiet session uh, this weekend. But what we're anticipating now is any break on a closing basis, any break of 17,800, I'm looking to engage on the short side. And we are targeting this quality objective versus this major swing structure, ABC of quality objective, down to 12,000. 185. And that concludes the weekly market outlook for a week commencing the 19th of September. As always, traders, plan the trade, trade the plan, and most importantly, manage your risk. Until next week, thanks very much.